In today's video, Barbara holds a needle gun. And I have absolutely no idea why someone thinks we could need one. I pump a camera into a ladder. And we find out how many of our two generators actually start. Hello, it is so good to see you again. This time we take a break from the refit work and show you our engine room. So please come aboard and let's discover all the technical stuff that accumulated during the last 72 years inside our engine room. Hi, we are Daniel and Barbara. The last years we spent sail racing against the best sailors in the world. But we always had the dream to live on a traditional ship and sail the ocean. We bought a huge 82 feet ship in need of a serious refit. We want to restore her and convert her back into the beautiful sailing ship she once was. We already did a full boat tour and an exterior tour. If you haven't seen them yet, I leave a link in the description. But some of you probably noticed that we haven't shown you the engine room. And now is the time for that. So please follow me along. This is the only entrance to the engine room. No service hatch and no entry from inside the ship. It is quite small and that's probably the reason why so much stuff accumulated down there. Let's start with the elephant in the room, our main engine. It is a Duff 1160, a six-cylinder turbocharged after-cooled diesel engine from 1977 with 320 horsepower and 11.6 liters displacement. It has only 5,000 running hours, which is almost nothing. And I'm really proud of me that I made it through all the starter without a mistake. When talking about the engine, we always get asked about the fuel consumption. At cruising speed it is about 10 liters per hour. Our cruising speed is 5 knots, which is not quite fast. But the boat wasn't on the hull for 3 years, so we have a lot of fouling on the hull. We hope when we have a clean hull the boat will be a bit faster. Our maximum speed was 8.5 knots at 1600 rpm. Still with all the growth on the hull. I have no idea what the fuel consumption at this speed is, but I'm sure it is way too much. Our engine system is very reliable, mainly because we have no seawater in the whole system. We have a dry exhaust that runs up all the way to the wheelhouse and keel cooling, which basically means we have a pipe that runs alongside the hull filled with the cooling and is cooled through the surrounding water. Until now, our engine is very reliable, it always started without any trouble. Let me show you how we start our engine.
The ship was built with a three-cylinder Deutz crude oil engine with 150 horsepower. We're still not sure if the ship was built 1950 as a steel ship or if she was built previous to that as a wooden ship and was converted 1950 with a steel hull. The fact that the Deutz engine is a German engine hints towards that she was built as a wooden warship by the Germans. However, only three years after the ship was officially built, the Deutz engine went out and uh, an industry four-cylinder slow-running diesel engine went in. Probably they found out that the 150 horsepower of the Deutz isn't enough and they need a stronger engine. The funny thing about that particular engine is there was a ship equipped with the same engine who had the engine changed 1952 so only one year before our ship got this engine in so probably it was just the very same engine however when the ship was converted to a sailing ship in 1977 they thought they don't need such a big slow running diesel engine with 80 ton 18 tons and the engine went out and a much more modern, much smaller, tough diesel engine, turbocharged and aftercooled, so the whole package went in, which is a much more suitable engine for a sailing vessel and we are very happy that we have an engine this size and not the engine the size of a house in the engine room. And after this completely pointless sunset, we can finally continue with the engine room tour. Wait, first of all, it wasn't pointless. We cannot keep such an epic sunset to ourselves. And second, why are you not in the wheelhouse? But usually it is the next day and we continue somewhere else. This time it still is the same day, you just decided for whatever reason to put a sunset in. And we are still in the engine room, I just went down from the wheelhouse. Everyone knows where we are. Anyway. Let's continue with the engine room tour. No, we start in the wheelhouse. Really? A new day on Flying Coney has just started. And as always, Barbara is waiting for you in the wheelhouse. Great, so follow me to the engine room. Here we have one of our four diesel tanks, and right above it is our day tank. Our never used wastewater system. And another diesel tank. Right here we have our water tank but we have two more water tanks in the fossil, each about 1000 liters, and that's plenty, so we never used that one. And here is our last diesel tank in the engine room. We have one more in the fossil. All in all, we have about 6000 liters diesel capacity, which brings us right across the Atlantic. And the last tank here is our engine oil tank. Yes, we find it funny too that we have an engine oil tank. And now let's transfer some fuel into our day tank. Got 
Right here we have the assembly of not working equipment. This is one of our two generators and we don't know much about it. Probably it is a Perkins P3 engine from the 50s and most likely it is not working, but we never tried to start it. The next not working item here is our diesel heater. We have radiators throughout the whole ship and they still look fine, so we probably could just hook up a new heater here and have central heating again. But on the long run we want to install a buffer tank for hot water and the floor heating that is fed by the coolant of the generator, a heat pump and a solid fuel stove. And until then we rely on our trusty wood stoves to keep us warm during the winter. You see, there's quite a lot to do. So if you want to support this project, you could do us a massive favor by liking these videos. It costs you absolutely nothing and you cannot imagine how much that would mean to us. Here we have our compressor. We even found a pneumatic needle gun. And I have absolutely no idea why someone thinks we could need one. This 12 2 volt forklift batteries are our 24 volt house bank. It used to have 320 amp hours, but considering its age, there's not much left of it. And we already had great fun carrying them down through the narrow engine room hatch. Over here, we have our Victron inverter, which is unfortunately outdated, and a battery charger. And down there, we have our two 12 volt starter batteries. This is our very improvised 220 volt system with all the circuit breakers. We really should renew it, but right now our main concern is to get the hull rust free as soon as possible and therefore that one has to wait. But until then we try to avoid to electrocute ourselves. We have an hydraulic steering system. And basically we have three pumps. The first one sits right behind the steering wheel. When you turn the wheel, it pumps the fluid and the rudder moves. And that one works without electricity or the engine running. For the autopilot and the joystick, we have a pump that is attached right to the main engine. And if that one fails, we still have this electric pump right here. And underneath this pump sits our compensating tank. This is our gearbox. There's not much to say about it, other than its well-known brand twin disc and it does what it does without causing any problems. Here's the drive shaft and the stuffing box where the drive shaft exits the hull. We had a lot of fun in the last two years scooping out all the sludge that accumulated down there. And Daniel explains what a stuffing box is and how it works. So if you want to know more about it, check out our last video.
Here we have our working generator. Well, kind of. It is a Deutz Lombardini two-cylinder diesel engine with only 1500 running hours. But it hasn't had a service in quite a while. And the issue with this engine is, it has a timing belt. And when the belt breaks, the whole engine breaks. In fact, not changing the timing belt is one of the main reasons why this engine fails. Therefore, we want to overhaul it before we run it more often. Nevertheless, you should start an engine from time to time. So let's start it. And please cross your fingers that nothing breaks. Let's pre-glow the engine and start. That was a lot of talking, but now you really know our engine room. I hope you liked the tour. And next time we will continue with the project. If you don't want to miss it, then make sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.